Welcome to another episode of Poor Man Mods. It's hot as balls here. As you can see, I'm sweating pretty bad. Or you might not be able to see, but I'm sweating pretty bad. It's been a long, hot day. Heat index is like 110 here. It's been pretty terrible. But today we're going to modify the exhaust even further on my Subaru Legacy here. Really, really good poor man mod, I think. Um, I was considering getting an aftermarket downpipe and a cat back for this car, which for the ones I wanted, it comes out to it's like about a thousand dollars for a downpipe and a cat back exhaust for this car. Um, and it gives you a little bit more power. The cat back doesn't really give you much power, but the downpipe does, but it makes your car sound really, really good. But but I'm poor, and I don't have $1,000 to spend on a downpipe and a catback exhaust, so I was looking around on the internet, toying with the idea of an exhaust cutout. And I came across a company called Loud Valves LLC, and they sell exhaust cutouts, or loud valves. Now, a lot of you probably know of mechanical cutouts where you have to take a plate off, and then it bypasses your whole exhaust, and it's loud as balls, and to make it quiet again, you have to put the plates back on, or there's electric ones which look just like a throttle body, and you hit a switch and it opens, and you hit a switch again and it closes. I was looking at electric ones, because I didn't want a manual one. And electric ones, you can make it sound louder and good whenever you want. But, I came across an option that's even cheaper, and even cooler, and probably simpler to install, and that is a boost controlled cutout by Loud Valves LLC. Now what this does, <laughs> it opens up just like a throttle body. It's like, kind of like a wastegate for your exhaust. So whenever this hits a certain amount of boost, I'm not sure what it's set at, but um, you can put a boost controller on these to adjust that. But when you hit a certain amount of boost, say three pounds of boost, this will open and work just like a cutout. So when you're driving, you're just cruising around at idle, it's your stock exhaust or whatever exhaust you have on it, it's nice and quiet, get on it, get some boost, and this valve opens and dumps it right out. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put this on the very bottom of the downpipe, right off the turbo. So basically when I hit boost, I'll have an open downpipe. I'll still have the factory cat there, but that's it. It's only gonna be a foot and a half of restriction dump it, and then bypass the rest of the exhaust. It's going to sound awesome, and it's probably going to give me a little bit more power, but the best part is, I'm not going to have any drone on the highway. When I'm just cruising, when I'm trying to sneak up to my lady's friend's house when she's with her husband, and i got to sneak into her house and hit it from behind without anyone knowing, <laughs> I can do it. So if you're trying to be sneaky, this is a really good option, and it takes the guesswork out of it. You don't have to think about it. Like with, a, with an electric cutout, you have to hit the switch, which, oh, I know, it's such a big task, hitting a switch, but you still have to think about it. You could forget to do it, or you, forget, you could forget to hit the switch, you could forget to turn it on, forget to turn it off, but with this, no matter what, when you hit the boost, it opens, and when you're out, it closes. It takes the guesswork out, makes it so much easier. This is the ultimate sleeper exhaust. I mean, I could be at a red light, Someone could pull up next to me and I could rev the piss out of my car and it would sound like a stock exhaust. And then we could go and get on it and this bitch opens up, open downpipe, and they're like, what the hell? So, we're going to put this on the car and we're going to make the ultimate sleeper exhaust for this Subaru. It's going to save you a lot of money, it's going to be super cool, and uh, I've been talking enough. So, let's get to installing this bitch. Dude, bro, why don't you just get like... A Cobb downpipe, bro, instead of just fucking with your stock one. Like, why not just get a Cobb catted or jig catted downpipe? Cobb's the shit. Like I said, this is poor man mods and that stuff is expensive. And for my power goals, I really don't think I need a catted or decatted downpipe. Like, it's only gonna give me a little bit more flow, just a slight amount. And for the money, I think this valve is gonna be a lot better. I mean, I can always upgrade to the downpipe because I can just cut the section that I'm welding in 
cut it out and put it on the new one. But for now, I don't think I need to spend three, four, five, six, one million dollars on a downpipe. Dude, but NVIDIA Q300 for life, bro. You gotta get that Subi Rumble, bro. Like it's, bro, bro. Like it's a, the, the coolest, most legit thing ever, bro. Like how, how, how can you be a Subi fan without the Subi Rumble? Well, again, like I said, this is poor man mods and that shit is seven, eight, nine hundred dollars for a good cat pack for these cars. And all together, this whole valve setup is like less than 200 bucks all said and done. So you do the math on that. And also I like, I'm appreciating silence more now. I have the Supra, which is loud all the time, but if I come home late or if I need to be quiet for some reason, I can't be. I mean, uh, sneak over to your girlfriend's house while the husband's home. Yeah, and if, if I'm trying to sneak over to my girlfriend's house while the husband's home and he hears the Subi rumble, he's gonna hear it. Sure, the Nvidia Q300 sounds great. It does, but I don't need that all the time. My my hot neighbor who has a WRX, female hot neighbor, every morning she wakes up for work and turns her car on and it wakes me up. It sounds good, but it seriously wakes me up. It's loud. So. I don't need the loudness all the time. This will allow me to have loudness only when I need it. But dude, bruh, you gotta go like stage two, stage three, stage four in this Subi build, bruh. You gotta be lit for life. Like, how can you just live the stages life, bro? Stages is everything. What if you get the Cobb access port, bro? How are you gonna, how are you gonna know what to do to it? I personally think the whole stages bullshit is just kind of bullshit. Like, you're not in Forza. Stage one, stage two, stage three upgrades. You're just doing upgrades. Um, this is gonna give me decent performance and decent sound, but it's gonna let me be more comfortable daily driver and more sleeper. I don't need full race mode, full 400 horsepower all the time. I just, for my needs and my wallet, I don't see the need to do a thousand dollar exhaust system. I just, I think this is the best option. It's cheap and it's when you need the sound, so. That's why. Dude, you're the most faggot Subi owner I've ever seen, bro. You are not a true WRX owner. You need to get out, sell your car, and get a Civic, bro. Now the process is gonna be different for every car, so I might not go into detail on how to show you how to remove the downpipe on this car. It's not a Subaru video, this is a loud valve video. This isn't a detailed video on my Subaru Legacy because you can put this loud valve on any car. We can put it on Moser's Fiesta, we can put it on that shit 40, we can put it on the Supra, IS300, this can go on any car. This is what's so great about the cutout, it fits on anything if you have a welder. But uh, we're gonna be removing the downpipe, but I'm not gonna go into strict detail on how to remove the downpipe because this video isn't necessarily about that. But to remove the downpipe, there are five bolts, three up top here and two on bottom, and then two bolts on the very bottom holding the exhaust together, and this baby pops out. If you don't wanna burn yourself, if you don't wanna lose some hair, or go crying to your mama, or need some uh, third degree burn paste, just wait for this thing to cool down. But damn, these nuts are hot. Ow! Ow, 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 I'm working on like a, a turbo that's only been cool for like eight minutes. Don't drop it. Four more to go. Four more to go. Eesh. Why am I so stupid? Boy, doing it hot. Yeah. Ow. All right. We're getting our nut off. Yeah. Do you have your glove on like you're supposed to? No glove. But I did get the nut off. Now with all five downpipe bolts out, we can go down, disconnect the oxygen sensor, and take the other two bolts out, and this baby's dropping. And just let it drop down. There we yeah. go. My issue is that I was under it. Yeah, I, <laughs> I dropped it down on my chest. It was like, hmm, I don't know where to go now. The exact thing happened to me, <laughs> and I ended up having to like inchworm out of the front. Yeah, <laughs> I just inchwormed out this side. I was like, man, I don't know what to do. <laughs> Only took us 15 minutes to undo an oxygen sensor plug and only 10 minutes to undo one 10 millimeter nut and bolt. We're making great progress. 
Oh wow. Oh my. So this exhaust setup must just be destiny because we were gonna put this on here and line it up to see where we're gonna need to make the cut. And apparently Subaru already has marks on this downpipe for us. Because these marks line up legit perfectly with this thing. <laughs> Almost like it was meant to be. This is, it's freaky. <laughs> like, if, when you put this on top, the metal is exactly on the outside of these two marks. What, what if Subaru intended for you to be able to do this? That's ridiculous. Okay, the pipe's gonna go this way. So it's already bending this way. It's just gonna be a straight shot. <laughs> that was probably the easiest cut I've ever done with a sawzall. I hate sawzalls. But, so like, basically at that point, like I'm right here, basically right where it straightens. So we put this in the car, you don't have to do this. We put this in the car with this section cut out, mounted it to the catback and the downpipe, put this 45 on here. You might not even need this. The only thing that Loud Valves gave us was the actual cutout itself. We decided to do this on our own, so you might not even have to do this. But we cut this section out, put this Y pipe in, bolted everything up, and then we tacked it in the car, which was very difficult, and we didn't show you it because I couldn't even see. Like, I, it was the worst welding of my entire life. But now it's on the table, and I'm running pretty low on gas, and I'm making a bet with Moser that I'm gonna run out of gas before you can finish his cigarette, which is about, uh, like, eight puffs left. So we're gonna see what will last longer, the gas in the bottle or Moser's cigarette. And I'm a fucking douche for not checking the gas level. Almost resting on it. Yeah. I'm still smoking. I might have like a drag or two left. You might you might outdo me. Yep, Gerald just No! Smoked. I ran out! Oh, that was insane. Holy I literally shit. just lost my Gerald. But what's weird is I'm welding better without gas right now. Is that really bad? It's supposed to, like, not be able to be weldable. But I'm not doing too bad. Look, that's a decent weld for a novice. Three weeks later. The cutout is now welded in. Ran into a couple issues where we need to make some adjustments, extend the pipe a little bit. So there's a couple different welds here, but it does fit now and we're gonna put it in the car. And once we bolt it up, we can hook it up to boost. So we've got the down pipe fully installed, everything's in. Um, we might weld an elbow on later. Um, we just don't feel like doing it right now, but we might do it later. Um, but it doesn't necessarily need an elbow on the cutout. But now we're gonna install the boost line. We're gonna connect it to the boost line coming right to the wastegate on the turbo, which is an eighth inch line, I believe. So this is a brass tee that we made, which will work with the vacuum lines here. Uh, we have an eighth inch here, and an eighth inch here, and then a 3 16 line here. So we're gonna get the line going to the wastegate to come here into this eighth inch, then this will go to the wastegate, and then this will go down to the cutout. Now we just have to run the line from the cutout up to here. Yeah, baby. Now so we can adjust when we want the valve to open and close, we're gonna install this homemade boost controller. I have a video on this if you don't know how to make one. Costs you like 10 or 12 bucks to make. And uh, we're just gonna take the line coming away from the wastegate that's gonna go to the valve, put it in the bottom here. This will push the spring up at the designated pressure and it'll let the, it'll let the air out here and then go to the cutoff valve. You want to put this in an area where it's easy to get to so you can adjust it. All right, now just tuck this away so it doesn't touch anything. And now we can go test it out. All right guys, the loud valve is installed and just as I expected, it's virtually silent in here. I mean, there's a little bit of road noise. You can kind of hear the exhaust because 
I did remove two cats. I've got the catless up pipe, and uh, I removed one of the cats in the down pipe. So that made it a little bit noisier, but it definitely doesn't sound like I have an aftermarket exhaust on here. And I'm sure you've all been waiting to hear it, so uh, let's give it a little test here. This is awesome for daily driving. Like if you don't want the droning on the highway, but you still want that extra power or extra noise when you want it, this is a, a perfect solution, man. And the possibilities are really limitless with this. You didn't have to weld in the Y pipe like we did. You could have just welded it straight on to the exhaust, which would, would have been a lot easier. You wouldn't have to do so much fabricating. Um, you could do a pipe coming out of the fender or coming out of the hood. Um, you could do so many things with this, but it does require some fabrication. It does require welding. So if you don't have a welder, you're going to need to have someone else weld it for you or you'll need to buy a welder. So that is the only downside to this. You can't just bolt it on or clamp it on. It does have to be welded. And I know not everyone has a welder, but you could take it to a muffler shop and they'll probably weld that thing on for pretty cheap. Um, so have your car down for a day or two and you can have a kick-ass exhaust. And I want to give a big thanks to Loud Valves again for hooking us up with this valve. It is, I think it's my favorite modification that I have ever done to any of my cars. Um, <laughs> it's just so unique and so cool. I love it. Um, I, I just can't believe how awesome it is. And Loud Valves is so awesome. If you use promo code POORMANMOD, you can get 10% off a Loud Valve. Let's do a second gear pull real quick. Fuck yeah. Promo code poor man mods, and you can get a 10% off discount on a loud valve and have one awesome sleeper kick-ass exhaust. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of Poor Man Mods. Uh, give it a thumbs up, share, comment, all that. Show us some love. And uh, go check out Loud Valves, and I will see you guys next time.